The beloved puffin is known for its charismatic, unique bill and colors, as well as its comical and hearty character, and it has become an icon of coastal Maine. However, in 1901, only one pair of Atlantic puffins remained nesting in Maine after decades of colony destruction by humans, including hunting for the millinery trade. In 1973, Dr. Stephen Kress pioneered a technique called social attraction and broke a barrier in conservation by becoming the first to restore a seabird colony. Not only did this experiment, called Project Puffin, rebuild colonies throughout Maine, but Kress's innovation and application of social attraction inspired conservationists to take a more active role in wildlife restoration and has been used in hundreds of restoration projects throughout the world. In the late 19th century, women adopted the fashion of wearing hats adorned by stuffed birds and feathers. By 1896, 200 million birds were slaughtered annually to adorn hats. Terns, a type of seabird similar to gulls, were hunted gruesomely along the Atlantic coast for the millinery trade. 40,000 terns were killed on one island in Cape Cod. This hunting devastated entire seabird colonies where not only terns, but also Atlantic puffins nested. Hunters killed terns for their feathers and puffins for their meat. By 1900, puffins were essentially eliminated from New England. Only one pair remained in 1901 on Matinicus Rock when the lighthouse keeper was hired by the National Audubon Society as the country's first wildlife protection warden. In 1918, the Migratory Bird Treaty Act was enacted to protect native species and conservationists at the time were convinced that if humans would stop interfering with the ecosystem, the seabirds would come back. But the damage was done, and puffins did not recolonize. Gulls, predators of terns and puffins, had already taken control of the main islands that had once teemed with puffins. After over 50 years, in 1973, Dr. Stephen Kress stepped up to break the barrier and bring puffins back. Stephen Kress had an early interest in nature and started working as a dishwasher at Audubon camps at age 18. In 1969, Kress was accepted as a bird life instructor at Hog Island Audubon Camp in Maine, a position that had been held by some of the most prominent ornithologists in American history. When Kress discovered that before the devastation, puffin colonies had existed on two small islands seven miles offshore from the camp, he envisioned taking campers out to an island covered in puffins and decided to bring puffins back to Maine. Nobody had ever successfully restored a seabird colony before. Attempts had been made with endangered species, including the lace and albatross and the short-tailed shearwater in the Pacific. They all failed. The prevailing attitude was, let nature take its course. If puffins had disappeared, well, that's too bad, but why should we bother to bring them back? I felt that it was important to bring them back because people had caused them to disappear. Atlantic puffins are particularly challenging seabirds to restore because they don't pioneer new colonies, but only return to existing ones. Chick transplant was the only viable method for colony restoration, so Kress collected young puffin chicks from an existing colony in Newfoundland. Kress transplanted the chicks to one of their former colonies on Eastern Egg Rock, a seven-acre island rising only 17 feet above sea level. Kress and his assistants encountered many barriers throughout the first season, including in simulating a natural burrow, not imprinting themselves on the puffin chicks, removing the gulls, and keeping the chicks clean. The researchers were also challenged with the difficulties of living in landing boats on the rocky shore of the island. Kress overcame all these barriers and became the first to successfully transplant an Atlantic puffin chick. He fledged all of the 54 chicks transplanted in 1974 and over the next 12 years transplanted over 900 chicks, anticipating that when enough chicks had matured out at sea, they would return to the site where they were raised and found a colony at Egg Rock. Sadly, the puffins raised on Egg Rock didn't return to breed. Crest knew puffins naturally coexist with terns in large colonies because of the protection and numbers given by the terns. He realized that, for the puffins to return, he needed to simulate an active colony on Egg Rock and came up with the novel idea that is the greatest achievement of Project Puffin, social attraction. Kress set decoys of terns and puffins throughout the island and set up loudspeakers which played recordings of turn nesting calls. Although decoys had previously been used in duck hunting, Kress was the first to apply them to conservation. 
He even set up mirrors for the living puffins to interact with. Terns were attracted to the audio and decoys and started breeding on egg rock within a year. Soon, the first breeding puffins were confirmed in 1981 after nine years of Project Puffins work and the population of puffins has been growing ever since. These were the first puffins to breed at Eastern Egg Rock in 96 years. Not only did puffins benefit from the restoration of the colony, but common and roseate terns, an endangered species, and arctic terns, which have the longest migration of any animal, now all breed on egg rock. The colony now numbers over 180 pairs of puffins and 1,000 pairs of terns. Project Puffin continues to restore tern and puffin colonies throughout Maine, where another one of Maine's endangered species, the least tern, also breeds. There are now more than 25 species of water birds nesting in restored colonies throughout Maine. This success was accomplished by Cress's revolutionary idea of social attraction. Social attraction has become a standard method and is now the most common method for restoration because of its simplicity and effectiveness. Social attraction has been used in over 140 restoration projects throughout the world, serving over 50 species of seabirds. Social attraction has been used to restore colonies after oil spills, move colonies to safer islands, and bring species back from the brink of extinction. It was even used in projects for two species, the Bermuda petrel and the Chinese crested tern, which were once so rare that they were thought to be extinct. Not only is social attraction used for seabirds, but its methods have been adapted for songbirds and shorebirds as well. All these applications, I didn't think about those when we started this project, but other clever people have applied this method to help. Project Puffin brought conservation to the attention of the general public and puffins have now become one of the most iconic symbols of Maine. Well, uh, I, I think one of the barriers was, was to, to publicize. I, I just think it was so important. Very few among the public knew anything about seabirds at all. Who, whoever saw a puffin before Steve Kress came along, you know, it was extremely important in getting the publicity and getting laws passed, regulations for uh, conservation. And of course, puffins are, you know, they were the perfect bird to succeed. Project Puffin has had a profound impact within Maine, but its success is also one of the most important turning points in conservation. By his work at Egg Rock, Cress broke a barrier in the methods of conservation by being the first to use human activities to restore populations of wildlife. And researchers from Project Puffin went on to work with other active restoration projects, including with the peregrine falcon and the California condor. Project Puffin broke the barrier of actively restoring seabird colonies. Up to the time that we started this project, it was not the norm to intervene on behalf of seabirds, even though uh, they often were depleted or extirpated by humans. The general idea was to let nature take its course. At that time, they, they were, in fact, they were calling it uh, ecological tinkering. Wildlife conservation today would be very different without Project Puffin as Cress's hands-on approach to restoration showed the world that human intervention is necessary to reverse human damage. By restoring puffins to Maine, Cress became the first to restore seabird colony. This success was achieved through social attraction, which has been used in hundreds of projects around the world. Project Puffin also broke a barrier in public awareness by bringing puffins and conservation to the attention of the general public. As one of the first active restoration programs, Project Puffin has inspired conservationists to take a more active role in wildlife restoration. You know, there's a growing recognition that, that, that people are going to have to step up, otherwise we're just going to lose species. And this is a time for action, not a time for stepping back and watching to see what happens.